Hey everyone, I am Danielle and we will continue our teaching series on seven things you need to know and should know about divine healing. I taught on it is God's will to heal you. Sickness comes from Satan. Healing is provided in the New Testament. Methods whereby healings can be obtained. Knowing the difference between God initiating healing and you initiating your own healing by standing on the Word of God. And healing is not always instant. I talked a little bit in the last teaching on healing is not always instant. Um, how people like Dodie Osteen believe for their healing, but it took a while before it showed up in her body. I know for me, same thing, it was progressive. So healing is not always instant just because you don't see it right away. Don't give up, stand on the word of God. And healing can be lost. I'm teaching that one today, healing can be lost. You don't have to lose your healing. But Satan's mean and he tries to come back. And so sometimes there's a counterattack. What do you do? Um, again, faith is powerful. You can initiate your own healing through faith. And God works through knowledge. What you don't know about, how can you have faith for it? If you don't know that it's God's will to heal you, then you're not going to have faith for healing. Jose, in the book of Hosea, he said, My people perish for lack of knowledge. That's why I'm teaching this, so we can be knowledgeable about the Word of God, and line up our thoughts and our actions with the Word of God, especially in the area of divine healing. So we need to confess the Word of God, believe the Word of God, speak the Word of God. It is so powerful. Divine healing is not mental, as some Christians think, and it's not metaphysical also. Divine healing is spiritual, and that's a powerful revelation. When God heals, He heals through the Spirit. God is not a mind. God is not a man. He is a spirit. Being healed by the power of God is being healed by the spirit of God. And because divine healing is spiritual, it can be lost. Many people have lost their healing by opening the door to the devil and they didn't even know it. It is a remarkable fact when Jesus came on the scene as a healer, he demanded faith and faith is born of the spirit. All Jesus' healings were spiritual. Some people think, well, if God heals, then you should be healed forever. Not necessarily true. Remember when Jesus appeared to John on the island of Patmos, he said to him in Revelation 3.11, he said, hold fast to what you have. Why do you have to hold fast to it if you can't lose it? It means you can lose it. So you got to hold fast to it. Hold fast to your confession, the Bible says. Um, healing is spiritual, just like I liken it to this. You know, when you are born again, it's in your spirit. You're saved in that spirit. Your spirit becomes alive to God. You don't see that it took place, but you know. You know when you're born again. You know when you receive Jesus. It eventually shows up in the physical. You're going to talk different. You're going to act different. You're going to think different. I believe it's the same with healing. When you have the revelation in your spirit that you are healed, even before you see it because of what Jesus did on the cross, 1 Peter 2, 24, Matthew 8, 17, go read those. When you have that revelation in your spirit, it will show up in the body. But you have to hold fast to that confession. Thank Jesus in advance that it's done, whether you see it or not. Because again, healing is not always instant. It can take a while to show up in the body, just like when you're saved. After I was saved, some things I was set from instantly. But I still smoked cigarettes. I still cursed. I still didn't dress right. But over time... It showed up in the body where I'm not smoking, I'm not cursing, and I learned to dress differently. Same with healing. It's spiritual, and it can be lost. You need to learn how to stand on the Word of God. So if you feel symptoms come back, you need to know how to resist those symptoms. Kenneth Hagin shared a testimony of this man who was healed in one of his meetings. And he saw the man later and saw that the man was crippled again. And he talked to the man and said, what's going on? He said, oh, I guess I wasn't healed. He said, so for 25 years, you took medicine every day. Yes. For 25 years, you had pain in your body. The man was like, yes. And after I prayed for you, you went eight months with no pain, no medicine. Yes. Well, that tells me you were healed. Come on. Anyone can see that. He said, I know what happened. He knew by word of knowledge. He said, the moment you felt the first feeling of pain, you said, I guess I was never healed, thought I was healed. And the devil put it right back on you. Just because you get a feeling doesn't mean the Word of God's not working. You have to stand the Word of God. My last lesson on uh, part five and six, I taught how you got to speak to it. No, symptoms, you're not coming back on me because I already received my healing. The Bible says, 1 Peter 2, 24, by Jesus' stripes, I was healed. So I don't receive this. You have to go, symptoms. 
if you speak out loud, I guess I wasn't healed, um, or start thinking it and going that way, the devil will oblige you and will put all the symptoms back on you. I love the story of P.C. Nelson. He was a Baptist pastor who got filled with the Holy Spirit. He passed away in 1942 and taught on divine healing. And he said the number one way people lose their healing is the counterattack more than any other way. A symptom comes back on them. If you watch my last video, I talked about Dolores Winder, who was miraculously healed in a Catherine Kuhlman meeting. Her healing manifested through the gifts of healings, miraculously healed. But before she left the meeting, the doctor who was with her, um, he was on Catherine's ministry team. He knew by word of knowledge Dolores was being healed. Um, he worked in her meetings. Anyway, he talked to Dolores because she was about to leave the meeting after she, that healing went through her body. And he said, Dolores, I want to warn you. I want to caution you. The devil's going to try to tell you that you were not healed. The devil will try to put seeds of doubt. Oh, it's just today you're feeling better. Oh, those symptoms will come back on you. Look, the devil has three plans for your life. To steal, to kill, and destroy you. Okay, so any thoughts like that, I promise you they're not from God. And you need to reject them and stand on the word of God. And when she went home, she started feeling some symptoms, but she rejected them because she knew she was healed. So many people lose their healing because of that. Um, I talked about in the last meeting, how the last message, how in the Catherine Kuhlman meetings, a lot of people received healing through the gifts of healings that manifest. It's instant. It's powerful. But because those people were not taught how to stand on the Word of God and build their own faith, quite a few of them lost their healing. God healed them. It was done. But when you get healed that way, you're healed on someone. You're healed on credit. You're healed on someone else's faith. It's your job to build your own faith and stand on the Word of God. It's just like raising a little baby. When they're two years old, yeah, you're still going to bathe them and dress them and stuff. When they're 21, if you're still doing that, that's weird. They're supposed to grow up. You're supposed to grow in your faith and learn how to stand on the Word of God yourself. And so that's why I talked about you can initiate your own healing by standing on the Word of God. You can keep your healing by believing the Word of God. You need to have healing scriptures. I share the testimony of Dodie Osteen, how she was healed of cancer. It's 40-something years later. She's still healed, but she said, I confess those healing scriptures every day still to this day. She does not want to lose her healing. James 4, 7. How to keep your healing. James 4, 7. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You have to show the devil your master over him because he will attack in certain areas. You've got to show him. Just like if you had the thought, if you're a Christian, you had the thought to go steal, to go murder, to lie. You would resist that. Hopefully you would. You're resisting the devil. It's the same with sickness. You have to resist it. You resist long enough, the devil will flee. I have the scripture for it. Just read it to you. James 4, 7. So if sickness comes, you need to speak to it. It doesn't do you any good if it just stays in here. You need to speak it. Imagine in high school when you took an oral test, the teacher would call out the question. Did you just keep it in here? No, you would have failed. You couldn't just say in your mind, oh, I know that answer. You had to speak it out to pass the test. It's the same thing in the kingdom of God. You got to speak it out. Tell that thing to go. Thank God you're healed. Resist that symptom. It might leave that day. It might leave that instant. It might leave a week later. But whatever you do, do not accept it. Do not start confessing. Well, I guess I wasn't healed. Don't start thinking that way. It's just a counterattack. Sometimes the devil doesn't give up so easy. So you have to speak to the mountains. Speak to the things that come in your life. You know, you got started in your Christian walk by speaking. Christianity is called the great confession. I'm not talking about confessing your sins. I'm not confessing. You're speaking what you believe. Romans 10, 9 said that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe it in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You got started in your Christian walk by confessing. Jesus said, if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before the Father. If you confess me before men, I'll confess you before the Father. Your whole Christian walk is based on confession. It's, Christianity is the great, it's confession. It's all based on what you say. You speak what you believe. I talked about in the last teaching. You release your faith through your words. We need to confess it. We need to speak it. Tell that thing to go so you don't lose your healing. Um, again, the Norval Hayes story where he uh, talked about his daughter being healed. He had to speak it over her. He had to tell that thing to leave, and it showed up. Another testimony, um, Norval Hayes, he had this woman on his show, on his, I'm sorry, not show, on his, um, his meeting, his ministry meeting. 
I might need some more coffee. But uh, she was there and she was dying of lupus. She was blind from lupus. She was in the nursing home. She was 90 pounds. She was so weak. And she got a hold of Norval, Norval Hayes' teachings, the audio teachings. And she realized, I don't have to die. I can speak to this thing. And she started speaking to it. And she said for a whole year, she did it every day, confessing she was healed, telling the pain to go, telling the symptoms to go. She did it for an entire year. Not one thing got better. In fact, it got worse. How many of us would give up? Wouldn't you want to suffer through a year then at least receive that healing manifest in your body and go the rest of your life healed? We get lazy. God does not honor lazy faith. He does not honor nonchalant faith. How do I know that? The woman with issue blood. She broke protocol. She got her house. How do I know that? Blind Bartimaeus, he's yelling for Jesus and they tell him to be quiet and he yells even louder. God responds to bold faith. And so for a year, she is initiating her own faith by standing on the word of God. And it was one year later before she felt a change. Long story short, every symptom left. Her eyesight's back. She went around America. I guess this was around the 70s, maybe early 80s, holding meetings at churches, teaching people how to um, receive healing. And she kept on standing on the word of God, still thanking him every day after that healing manifested because she did not want to lose her healing. Narvo Hayes said he talked to a woman that was healed of cerebral palsy. He said, how often does the devil try to put it back on you? She said, almost every day. So almost every day she's feeling symptoms that try to come back on her and she's having to resist them. And eventually I know those symptoms. I don't know her at the end of her story. This was years ago. So she's probably in heaven by now, but eventually those symptoms would have had to leave because James four, seven says, if you resist the devil, he will flee. So healing can be lost. It just doesn't have to learn how to release your faith through your words and your actions. Speak Mark 11, 23, 24, speak to the mountain, tell it to go, believe it in your heart. Don't doubt, believe you received it and it's yours. That is such a powerful revelation. And you might not have a revelation on healing yet, but I'm telling you, if you get scriptures and you confess them and speak them long enough, you're going to start believing them. And it's going to go from a head knowledge to a spiritual revelation where you won't fear sickness and you will see healing manifest in your body. I promise you, because I have the word of God, it is God's will to heal you. I encourage you to go back, watch these teachings over. Go listen to Dodie Osteen's teaching. Go listen to Norval Hayes. Listen to Kenneth Hagan. Find men and women of God who went through it themselves and can testify. We're saved by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. They can testify to their healing because they saw it work. I can testify. I saw it work for me. I know the God, the word of God works every time. So I pray that this has encouraged you. I pray these seven um, teachings on seven things you should know about divine healing has helped you and weeded out some doubt and unbelief and your own human reasoning and that you see it for yourself. Watch the teachings over and over. It will encourage you. It will build your faith. I want to see you live in victory. I'm going to continue living in victory and I believe you will too. But it's our job to enforce the victory by standing on the word of God, believing the word of God and speaking the word of God, no matter what we see or what we feel. Thank you so much for watching this video and this series. We love you. God bless you. Hey there. I want to thank you so much for watching these videos. If you have been enjoying the content produced here, then I want to encourage you to prayerfully consider supporting this ministry. The easiest way to support us is to go to jeremyfontenot.com forward slash give, and there you'll find several ways to give. If you want to give by tithely, tithe.ly, uh, you can find that information, the link on the website. If you want to send it in by mail, Make your checks out to Revival Missions and send it in to P.O. Box 546 Jonesboro, Louisiana 71251. Or if you want to give via PayPal, you can do so by going to paypal.me forward slash Revival Missions. I want to thank you in advance for sowing into this ministry to see the gospel proclaimed. We love you here at Revival Missions.